42. It's our privilege to talk to uh, Dr. George Chicarillo Maher. He's a professor of history and politics at Drexel University and a former uh, professor at uh, Berkeley out here. Chloe, so you're almost back home, at least via Skype. Uh, professor, thanks for taking a little time. We want to talk about what's been happening in Ferguson. And, uh, and, and let me just, it's a very broad question. This has become a national spotlight. We've been covering protests here in Sacramento as we cover what's happening there. Uh, why is this resonating so much? Well, I think the reality is we have to understand this in its historical context. It's nothing new, first of all, for black men, especially to be subject to police violence and police uh, killings. This is something we know from the Bay Area, going back to Oscar Grant and long before. Um, but we also are in a moment in which people you know, get very excited about Obama being elected in 2008 and begin to realize over a number of years that in many ways things have not changed. In some ways they've actually gotten uh, worse for a lot of especially poor, uh, you know, poor people of color in this country. And so this really explains the growing outrage, not just of this case, but the previous killings that have occurred recently of Radisha McBride, of you know, Trayvon Martin, of course, being a huge case in recent years. Now, Professor, you're talking about the history of this, and I can't help but think with the governor sending in the National Guard to maintain peace with these tensions, it reminds me of what happened almost 57 years ago in Little Rock, Arkansas, where the governor sent in the National Guard to maintain the peace. And in that situation, the peace was to keep Central High from being integrated. And as you were just saying, here we, here we are again. Absolutely. And actually, honestly, of course, the, the National Guard are going to play a, a, probably a more pernicious role in this case than they played in that. On that in that case, they were really on the side of, of upholding and pressing forward freedom uh, for, you know, for black Americans. And the question today is whether that's going to be the case or whether it's going to be the case, such as the case of the Highway Patrol, who stepped in much celebrated, claimed to be defusing the protests. And when it became clear that the protesters weren't going away, they began to use tear gas again. They began to fire rubber bullets and use this militarized technology even more you know recognizing that um, it is not the majority of protesters there that are doing things like like looting like breaking into stores and, and, and taking shoes uh, what is the proper response by law enforcement when people are doing that uh, well the reality is most people are have been tear gassed have been shot with rubber bullets for simply being in the street uh, for remaining in the street for refusing orders to disperse because they didn't take you know, they didn't take the streets to simply go home again. They took the streets to express their outrage at the fact that this police officer has, you know, fled the area, um, should be understood as a fugitive, um, despite the fact that he, he is clearly not facing any legal charges for some reason. Um, and, and now people are demanding his arrest and demanding his prosecution and demanding transformation of the Ferguson police. Yeah, I heard somebody point out in a, in a conversation recently, and I, I forget what network I was watching, uh, they were saying no one will argue that in the 50s, uh, certainly institutional racism was greater than it is today. Uh, at that time, we had a lower incarceration rate of minorities, of African Americans, and we had a lower crime rate with African Americans, and, and they were trying to say they, don't, they saw a disconnect there. Um, I think, unfortunately, there's been far more continuity than there has been change. While, of course, we don't live under formalized Jim Crow, many people have, of course, pointed out that the, that the Ferguson police are almost entirely white in a city that has become uh, almost entirely, or, or a large majority of it, has become a black city. And so you have a serious disconnect there, but that disconnect is really a symptom of an underlying disconnect, which is that the, the role of the police in Ferguson has been largely to harass the young black population. You see, in this case, allegedly Mike Brown was, was being, uh, you know, questioned about allegedly jaywalking and, and, you know, and possibly shoplifting. But these are things that, um, of course, people do all the time, and you don't find the same police response. You certainly don't find murder, uh, and murder as it seems on the basis of this initial autopsy result uh, with his hands in the air as the, as the witnesses have accounted. All right. Uh, Professor, thank you so much for your insight this morning. We appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we'll talk to you again. Thank you, sir. It's